Today in our 2013 Chevy Silverado, we'll be installing the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for the companion fifth wheel trailer hitch, part number BWG NRK 1057-5W. This underbed kit can be used with the gooseneck to fifth wheel trailer hitch adapter by replacing the hitch ball with the fifth wheel trailer hitch such as part number BWR VK 3500. Now we can go over operation of our new gooseneck hitch and ball. To install our gooseneck ball, we'll simply pull out on the hitch handle, rotating it towards the cab of the pickup to lock the pin out so we can then take the ball and drop it into the throat of the gooseneck hitch. Then to release the handle, we'll simply rotate it towards the rear of the vehicle and the spring pressure will close the pin on the gooseneck ball. Then once we're finished using our new gooseneck ball, we'll simply pull the handle on the pin again, locking out the hitch pin, taking the ball out, turning it over, and putting it back down into the throat of the gooseneck hitch, and releasing the handle, locking the pin back in position, and locking the ball in the stored position. To begin our install, we'll first go ahead, lower and remove the spare tire, and remove both rear wheels. While it's not a requirement, it'll give us a lot more working room and make an easier install. Next, to give ourselves some more working room, we're gonna lower the exhaust. This particular application is a gas model, and it'll differ with a diesel. To lower the exhaust, we're gonna need to remove the rubber isolators from the metal hanger. To do that, we'll spray each one with some spray lubricant you can remove it from the top or the bottom, whichever is easier. We'll do a total of four. One at the tailpipe, two just behind the muffler, and one forward on the exhaust pipe. Once we remove the rubber isolated from the metal hangers, we'll go ahead and lower the exhaust and let it rest on the axle. Next, we're gonna cut out the heat shield. As we cut it out, we'll go just behind the fasteners that secure it, and make sure there's no heat shield in the front of the hat channel. To cut it out, we're just gonna use a cutoff wheel. You can also use a pair of tin stems. Next, we're gonna move into the pickup bed. Here we're gonna find the mounting location for our ball. We'll measure from the end of the pickup bed as per the instructions for a short bed, as this application is. We'll mark our length from the end of the pickup bed, and then we'll find our width by measuring between the wheel wells. Then once we find our Center point, we'll go ahead and pre drill the hole for the pilot bit. Note this application has a bed liner, so we're going to be going through the bed liner, then down through the pickup bed. On applications without a bed liner, you'll simply go through the pickup bed, or if you have a spray in liner, you'll simply go through the spray in liner, then down through the pickup bed. Note that your length can slightly change with the spray in bed liner as it will add to the surface where you're measuring from at the end of the pickup bed. So you'll need to compensate for any buildup on a spray and liner. We recommend to use a hole saw bit to cut out the four inch hole so that the gooseneck throat will come up through the pickup bed. To assist in drilling out our hole, we've got a pre-drilled four inch hole in our board. We'll take the board and set it over the hole, center it up, and then put our bit in place. Once we have it in position, we'll go ahead and put our body weight on the board to help hold it in place and drill out our hole. Then once we have the hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and remove our board and we have our perfectly drilled four inch hole. Next, on the passenger side, we'll locate the hat channel that's above the rear axle. From the front edge of that hat channel, we're gonna go about six and a half inches forward 
make a mark. We're gonna cut a V in the pickup bed seam approximately an inch and a half long. This notch will allow for the cross member rails to be fit in above the frame rail. Next, we'll take the front rail, set it into position above the frame through our cutout. Once we get about halfway in, we'll stop because we'll need to locate the center section mounting point on the driver's side. We have a bolt and an O-ring that'll go into position now. We'll take the bolt, feed it through the cross rail, then put the O-ring on, run it down tight to the steel to help hold the bolt in position. Now with the bolt in position, we can feed the cross member over top of the frame rails. Then we'll go underneath and help feed it over top of the driver's side frame rail. The notch or cutout in our cross member will fit over top of the brake lines and wiring. So once we're in place, We'll then take the cross member, move it back approximately four inches behind our four inch hole, and then rotate the base rail up so that the pre-drilled holes are facing the rear of the truck. We'll simply use a wrench to help rotate the bar up into place. The rear rail has pre-drilled threaded holes in it. These holes are actually offset and not in the center of the bar. The offset or threaded holes need to be down so we'll go ahead and make a mark on our bar showing the up position. Then we can take our bar put it into place. Once we have it in position we'll again take our wrench and turn it up facing up and down and push it back against the hat channel. Now we're going to take the center section, feed it up into position. We'll take our front rail and slide it back forward, lining up the holes in the center section with the pre-drilled holes in the front cross member. Now with everything lined up, we'll go ahead and take a nut and install it under the driver's side bolt, fastening the front rail to the center section. We just install our fasteners finger tight at this time. Then we'll repeat the same process with the center fastener using our half inch bolt and split lock washer. Going through the front rail, then through the center section, securing with a half inch nut. Now repeat the same process with the driver's side attachment point for the front cross member to the center section. Next, we'll install the four fasteners that will secure the center section to the rear cross member. Each of these fasteners will be the half inch bolt along with the half inch split lock washer and a half inch flat washer. It'll go through the center section into the threaded holes for the rear rail. First, we'll take our carriage bolt and strap. Feed the carriage bolt into the strap, locking them together. Then we can feed them in through the oval hole just behind the rear hat channel and our rear cross member. Once in the hole, we'll then turn the strap so it holds the carriage bolt into position. Then we'll hang on to the bolt so it stays in position and install the oval bushing which will fill the oval hole. Now once the bushing's in place, we'll use the retainer clip to hold it all in position. Retainer clip will thread onto the carriage bolt like a nut. Next, we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Next, we'll put the side plate in position. The side plate will go over the bolt 
we just put in the frame, line up with our front and rear bracket. To secure it to our carriage bolt, we'll use a flat washer, split lock washer, and then a nut. This will help hold it tight to the frame. Then we can install the hardware for the side bracket to front rail. This will be a bolt and flat washer. Go through the side bracket, then through our front cross member, where we'll secure it with a split lock washer and then a nut. Hardware we'll use for the rear side plate attachment to rear cross member will be a split lock washer, flat washer, and bolt going through the side plate and into the threaded hole of the rear cross member. Again, we'll stall each of our fasteners finger tight at this time. Once we complete one side, we'll move over to the other side and repeat the same process. Here's the driver's side, side bracket clamp. This clamp will fit around the frame and then go through the side plate where it'll get secured with a split lock washer and nut. The notch is cut out to go around the brake lines and manufacturer's wiring. We'll go ahead and fit it into position, feeding it from the inside out. Split lock washer, and then a nut. On the passenger side, we'll simply use the U-bolt to secure the side plate to the frame. U-bolt will go from inside out, fitting through the pre-drilled holes, and get secured with a half inch split lock washer and then a nut. Again, we'll install these fasteners finger tight. Now with our center section, rails, and side brackets in place and secured finger tight, we're ready to go ahead and tighten it down. We'll start with the center section bolts to cross rails. Once we have the front cross member to the center section, we'll then do the four across the back of the center section to the rear cross member. And we'll tighten down the cross members to the side plates and finally ending with our carriage bolt stud securing the side bracket to the frame. After we tighten it down, we'll then torque the specifications. From the center section to the rear cross member, it'll be necessary to use a line wrench to torque it down. Next, we'll install the hitch pin handle. The tab will face up, and the handle will go on the cab side of the pin. First, we'll take the handle, feed it through the hole in the center section, out towards the wheel well. We'll line up the handle with the pin, taking the bolt, going through the handle, and then through the pin. Next, we'll install the lock nut. Once we have it installed finger tight, we'll go ahead and run it down. Now with our handle in place, we'll need to install the U-bolt chain hold down. Using the pre-drilled holes in the center section of the head assembly, 
We'll go ahead and drill up through the pickup bed and on this application, the bed liner. We'll use a smaller pilot bit and then open up to a half inch size. Now with one side drilled out, we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now with the holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and drop the U-bolts in position. To make it easier to install our hardware underneath and keep the U-bolts in place, we can simply just add some weight on top of the U-bolt. Now we'll go ahead and put our hardware on underneath. Now with our U-bolts tightened down, we can go ahead and reinstall the exhaust, spare tire, and both rear wheels. And that'll complete our install of the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit, part number BWG NRK 1057-5W on our 2013 Chevy Silverado.